there guys. So uh, what we've got today is a Nordic track uh, bike, an upright bike. So it's a flywheel magnetic upright bike and we're just going to unbox it, pull all the bits out and try to figure out how to put it together. Pretty cool bike, it's a model uh, model GX 4.6 Pro upright bike. So um, let's see how it goes. Alright guys, so I opened it from the top and I tried to get everything out from the top but it's almost impossible. Everything is just so well packed in and tight, sticky taped up, separate boxes. So what I did was just cut down with a Stanley knife down the front face and opened up the whole front face. So now I can take everything out from the, from the side. So that will be a whole lot easier. So there's the seat. We've got uh, some fairly comprehensive looking books, instruction books, obviously operation manuals, um, some bolts, nuts and bolts, and I don't know what this is, it's fairly heavy, uh, left and right, oh that's, I think that's the pedals, yeah these are the pedals, uh, okay. So guys, you can see here that uh, it's quite a bit of work. It's taken about I don't know, probably 20 minutes, half hour at least to unpack this and it's not even finished yet, but you can see there's a whole bunch of uh, attachments and bits and pieces here, uh, which will be part of the assembly process. The main bike is still in here, so I'll lift that out in a minute. Um, we've got crank pedals to assemble. You've got the seat shaft. You've got the main stem. This is the main control unit that goes on top, the LCD 7 inch screen which has all your um, automatic programs in there. And connection to the iFit program, whether you choose to take a subscription or not. <coughs> Excuse me, or not. Um, I think you get a couple of weeks free trial for it, so probably they're hoping people will get addicted to it. But, you know, from what I hear it's pretty good, but uh, if you want to spend the money. but. Otherwise, you know, you can use the predetermined programs that are in there, but we'll look at all that later. So, um, we'll come back to you again in a minute when I get all of this out of the box. Have a look at the instruction book and see what's involved in uh, putting it together. See you okay, soon. Okay, so step number one of the assembly is this uh, crossbar at the bottom. It's got the little wheels that you can use when you tilt it up to roll it around and move it from room to room or store it away. And there's two long bolts that go straight down in the front and this cross member just bolts into the frame through the bottom here with this tool. This tool is an Allen key, looks like a 10mm Allen key and it um, just fits into the long bolts and screws that down tight like that. That's the first step. The second step will be the rear one uh, which is that one just down there with the two, two little round black discs. That'll be the same thing and that will go on the back. So uh, once I've got the back one on, I'll show you that. All right, guys, so um, we've finished the first two steps. Pretty easy. As I mentioned before, the crossbar at the back with the two wheels, um, or at the front. This is the front of the bike because the pedals are back here. And the two little directional wheels face the front. So when you tilt the thing up, you can easily roll it and move it around. And then at the back, it's the same thing. The crossbar here at the back just goes straight down with two 10mm long bolts, 110mm long, 10mm diameter. They go in here and hold this crossbar to the frame, and that's the rear support leg. So that's pretty straightforward. Yeah, we're here. Uh, so we'll find the next couple of steps and we'll come back to you. All right, guys, so the next part might look a bit tricky, but it's not. So you've got this piece, and this is like a, um, just like a, a protective plastic cover to make it look nice and that that goes over the top of 
this cable. So you just slide that over the cable and that sits there. But we can't snap it down yet because the vertical piece that comes up, <coughs> that's this piece. We have to get the cable up through that because on the top that's where the LCD screen plugs in. And to secure that vertical piece to the frame, we need to lift this up and put a couple of bolts in here. After we've got the bolts in, the cover will be able to be snapped into position. So all we do is get this on. Uh, they've been considerate, they've put a little draw wire, a little piece of wire from the top to the bottom and they've tied it off up there. So all we do is just wrap this around, around this cable a couple of times to secure it and twist it on. And then what we do is we take it up here at the top and we just pull it up. We just pull it up like that. And that will go over the top. And then here's, I'll just tie that off there. Okay, so I need to lift that up. Now that, at least does it say how far down this goes? Okay guys, so the front support for the LCD screen and controls and the handlebars, um, that, that shaft here I've now inserted into the bike and it goes down here in the bottom. It was a little, um, a little tight, which is a good thing. So I just wiggle it forward, back, left and right and pressure down and it drops down. And then there's, I've put one bolt in down here, you can see there's four bolts, one here, one here. And then you just hold this up, afterwards remember that, that will snap down and cover all that. We've got our wire up the top which will connect, so I'm holding that with this piece here to, so it doesn't drop back in. And if you look around the front, there's two more holes. If you look around the front, there's two more holes there. For our bolt and washer to go in and screw up tight and hold the main vertical upright there. All right, I'll come back with the next step. Go. Okay, so back again, uh, we've secured the front piece. Make sure the wire that you've pulled up the center, you leave it tied, leave it tied on a little bit with um, a piece of string or the piece of wire they provide so it doesn't drop back down the hole. If it does, you'll probably have to hook it out with a coat hanger or undo your bolts down the bottom and take it out and start all over. So make sure you keep that there. And when you're sliding this down inside the hole, make sure you keep this gently pulled up as far as it can come up. Because if you leave it down a little bit, it could just curl up and you could pinch it and damage the cabling. So keep it as far upwards as you can keep it. Um, the next step is you can, once you've tightened up your four bolts, nice and tight, you can snap down this plastic cover here. It just snaps on nice and easy. If you ever need to take it off, you just use one side, you pull out one side like this, and you can get a screwdriver and just gently lever that up and it will come out. Okay, the next step is the seat post, the chrome seat post. It goes with the uh, top piece angling towards the back, and we just gently put that in, and that can slide all the way down and up for your for your seat height adjustment. Um, okay, back in a minute with the next. All right guys, the next step's a little bit tricky. It shouldn't be, but it is. So we've got this big knob here that slides. You pull it out and you can adjust your seat. Let it go and it will drop in and lock into the seat height you want. To get it in though, you need to have the seat post in. You need to actually pull that out and then this piece in the middle here you can start it off by fingers and screw it in, but then you need an adjustable wrench or a shifter, a spanner, or the right size spanner uh, in here. And you've got two flat sides on it where you can bring it around and lock it in tight. Once it's locked in tight, then you have a spring return on this and it will just lock into whichever height of the seat you want. So, a tricky little part, but that's how you do it. The seat on now, uh, the seat's pretty easy. I didn't bother showing you how to assemble it because it's really straightforward. The seat has got four nuts already screwed on to four little posts, threaded posts, and there's a bracket which just goes straight onto the bottom of the seat. Hold the seat here, 
put the bracket on, put the nuts on, and I used a little socket set. Okay, a socket set with it's probably a 12 or a 14 mil socket on the end of it, um, and that um, that just locks the bracket onto the seat. Once you've locked the bracket onto the seat, there is there is um, another little another little bracket which has the screwed piece on the bottom for adjustment and it really simply just goes together there's no need to explain how it's fairly straightforward so on the bottom of the seat there's an adjustment you can undo that adjustment and your seat slides back or forward so you've got that depending on the size of the person how close to the console they want to sit so we've got our pedals here the two pedals come in a plastic package together with the toe straps and the one thing to remember is, really simple to put on, just a screw here, but the left pedal is a left hand thread, so you turn it to the left to tighten it up. It comes with this little spanner here, with two flat sides, and it locks onto the pedal, and it just locks it on there and turns it around nice and tight. The right hand pedal is a right hand thread, it screws on the normal way. On the end of the pedal here, there's a little sticker, and the sticker tells you which direction to turn it to tighten it. Okay guys, so next we've got our main head end, or this is the control part, where we set up our programs. We've got a 7 inch colour screen, which we'll go over later on in the review, but the next step is we need to get this attached. So we've got our wire that we pulled up through the centre shaft. This wire here has to connect onto this plug here, and these two little cables, mark L and R, left and right, have to poke out the little hole down here in the bottom. So it kind of takes two people to do that. One's got to hold this, one's got to plug it in and feed the wires. When that sits on there then, there are four screws that go in from the bottom. And that's how we attach this. So. All right guys, so it's time to put the handles on. The right hand side handle's already on. It's uh, pretty straightforward. The way I explain this left one to go on now, I'll show you. Um, it's the same way that the right one goes on. So. It's attached by two screws. There are two screw holes here, which screw into the side down here. And there is one wire, one cable, which connects, which connects to the cable, to go back a little bit, which connects to the cable here on the handle. And what that does is it, it connects these two pulse rate, heart rate sensors into the actual um, computer of the machine. So, we connect the wires here, you need a second person really, connect the wires while they hold this and then you can attach that onto there like that, put in the two bolts, the two screws and do them up with the Allen key or the Allen wrench that's been provided. Um, okay, see you next. Okay, so um, just a word of warning, when you screw the handlebars on, there's two bolts to screw on, I over tightened one of them and it stripped the thread. So I'm going to have to drill it and tap it, create a new thread, oversize, a larger size, and put another screw in. Not really a big deal, but it's just a bit of extra work that, you know, when something costs 1700 bucks, you know, you hope you don't have to do that. So I didn't really do it that tight, but I guess it, uh, it didn't need to be as tight as I did it. I assume there'd be a reasonable amount of weight on these, so it wants to be tight. But anyway, no big deal. It's still firm. Um... Yeah, so that's that. Just be wary you don't over tighten those. And then this cowling, there's this, this piece here at the front just slides on and there are two screws to go in the back to hold it. And then this piece comes on from the other side and it just basically snaps in. And so that just covers all of your connections and your bolts, makes it look nice. All right guys, we're nearly there. So the last couple of things. We've got our drink holder. It's a pretty large size so you can fit uh, almost anything in there so so there's your drink holder pretty simple it just sits there two screws from the bottom and that's on um, then we have up here we have our tablet holder and this this is really cool because um, because this this can rotate so what happens is as I understand it with some of the programming if you're doing live classes with instructors or predetermined ones they tell you to get off the bike and grab some dumbbells or some barbells and do some some weight work on the floor so it's like um it's like a mixed class a, a mixture of free weight work um as well as some cardio work on the bike so if you jump off 
you don't have to actually stand behind the bike to view the screen. You can rotate that out and stand somewhere clear of the bike. Um, you can fit different size tablets. This is a spring-loaded holder, and that sits in there. You've got an HDMI out um, plug, and you've got also a USB plug uh, port, which you can use to, I imagine, for an input as well as for charging, charging any uh, devices like a tablet that you may have in here. So that's pretty handy, and this device just sits on the bottom, and there's four screws on the bottom in here. Pretty simple to put on. The last thing, second last thing, is we've got a heart rate monitor strap. So you can measure your heart rate, as I understand it, but we'll cover this in the review of the machine once I know how to use it. You can grip onto the um, handlebars here and it'll measure the pulse and pick up your pulse and heart rate that way. Or if you've got the heart rate monitor strap around your chest, then um, via Bluetooth connection it will, it will measure your heart much more accurately with the heart rate strap. And then we have our two straps on the, on the pedals to go on, so you can lock your feet in nice and tight. So you can push and pull and lift as you should in cycling, so you get an even balanced cycling effect. Um, that's pretty much it for the assembly. Uh, we've, got, we've got the power up now, we've got uh, down the bottom here it plugs in. It's a little power adapter, so we'll plug that in, go up and have a look there. And we'll see what happens. Here we go. Let's hope it works. Oh, something happened. Okay. So guys, I need to read it. I need to start to work out how to use this now. And um, we'll get and do a review of this bike once we understand it ourselves. So far it looks pretty good. You know, I don't think the quality's overly great. Especially disappointed the way this screw stripped on me on this left handle here, and I'll have to retap and thread that, and it's brand new. So, um, and it's actually for my wife. It's actually too too uh, the seat's too high. I've got to drill some more holes to allow the seat to sit down a little lower. And the problem with that is it puts her down so low that she can't view the screen properly. So the screen's fixed and it can't be angled. But I reckon with a little bit of modification I can set it up so I can angle that as well and have that variable for shorter people or taller people. Anyway, we'll get to a review when we can. Thanks for watching.